One April day in tiny Virginia City, Montana, two women who had never met had the most surprising first encounter. One had changed the life of the other without even knowing it. How could that be possible? A simple reason, leadership. That day, and more about it later, further clarified for me why I am so passionate about teaching leadership and how profoundly what you do or don't do really matters. For 35 years, leadership's been a core part of my life. I've been an athletic coach, community leader, an entrepreneur, and a teacher of leaders from 17 to 70. And today, I'm going to give you three actions. Three actions for effective leadership and three actions for personal growth. There's nothing that inspires me more than when rising leaders think about their vision and are willing to put down on paper, like this from a 20-year-old Montana State University student. I want to save the world. As dumb and superheroish as it sounds, I want to make change and I want to learn how. And this from a 45-year-old civil engineer. I want to give back to my community, my state. I need time to understand how to align who I am with what I do. To lead well, we must align who we are with what we do. And that brings us to the first action. And that is to clarify your purpose. Whoop, here we go. Well, that is me. I'm 18, and I know it. And I am a lifeguard, I am a competitive swimmer, and I first found that I needed to clarify my purpose that summer. The recreation director, who knew how to empower rising leaders, asked if I could help. By simply saying yes, I became the manager of this large municipal pool, I had a staff of nine, and there was this giant swim team of 80. That job energized me like no other. My purpose was clear. I wanted those kids to love swimming, and I wanted them to love and relish being a member of our team. To clarify your purpose, there's some wonderful techniques you can use, like asking great questions. So, right now, ask yourself, where do I get my energy? At 18, I was fueled by creating joy through swimming. At 54, I am energized by empowering others to lead well. Let me tell you a little secret. A clear purpose unleashes resources, energy, and inner courage that's going to inspire and surprise you. Ask yourself, does my purpose align with my beliefs and values? To release those resources, your purpose must be foundationally correct. It must align with your core purpose. And ask yourself, is what I'm doing worth doing? Do you consider community, empowering ideas, the common good? And finally, ask yourself, why is this important to me? This is where you can ask family, friends, mentors to challenge your motivation around your purpose. And so that gives you a deeper understanding as to the why it is you want to do what you want to do. Finding right placement in the world can be incredibly powerful, but it can be absolutely terrifying if you don't know how to get there. And that brings us to action number two. And that's to acquire leadership skills. And I mean skills, I mean training, I mean practice. It's the willingness to say, I don't know what I don't know. And it's having curious, and passionate review of that idea that I am open to new ideas. One of the things that I can tell you about leadership skills is whether we're parenting, or whether we're learning a new sport, or a flip turn in swimming. 
We acquire that new skill or technique, and then we practice it until it comes as second nature. Leadership is exactly the same way. We acquire conflict resolution skills, public presentation skills, listening skills, and then we practice them, and then we find ways to practice them. You might practice them in a classroom, or a workshop, or watching a TED talk, or more difficult settings, like a public presentation. We practice so that we are ready for when those high-stake challenges of leadership come forward, we can tackle them. Practice made perfect for Eric Dietrich. This is his senior year at Montana State University, and he was editor of our campus newspaper. Eric's daily job provided him with leadership skills and leadership growing. He had 40 student staffers, tight, tight budget, and deadlines that even the best of us would have a hard time keeping up. And when that opportunity to interview world-renowned newsman Tom Brokaw came available, Eric said yes. He was ready. He'd been preparing for that for years. That interview was a great honor to Eric, but it was his day-to-day -day job as editor that provided him with the biggest leadership skills, those tough challenges. And that brings us to action number three, which is to take on real responsibility. Those who know me know my daily mantra. You learn to lead by leading. And that includes a gentle guidance of those who've been there before. It's the kind of guidance I received when I was managing that large pool. And I will never forget the hidden power in that opportunity. Real responsibility also can come with real consequences, and it can affect real people and real organizations. And it's why we carefully surround ourselves with that guidance and mentors that can help us. That opportunity to fail provides us with the incentive to succeed. This brings us full circle. It's a cycle. We clarify our purpose, we add leadership skills, and then we take on real responsibility and we dig in deep. And a great example of that is Teresa Borenpol. She understood that cycle. She came to Montana State University at 22. Prior to that, she didn't see it as a viable option. When I met her at the MSU Leadership Institute, she had two other jobs. She had a full academic load plus, and she was taking care of her younger brother who was dealing with significant mental health issues. But Teresa's purpose was clear. She was passionate about it. She wanted a bachelor's degree, and she wanted to learn how to lead. Leadership skills, she took every possible course and certificate so that she could grow herself. And real responsibility, first she worked at the Leadership Institute, then she became student body president, and after that, student regent for our university system. By saying yes, she impacted thousands of students and thousands of employees. And now, she's getting her doctorate in education with the purpose of removing those barriers to higher education. She embodies empowered leadership. Now, let's go back to the beginning of this talk and those two women in Virginia City. That day, I was hosting Dr. Sharina Vadi. She won the Nobel Peace Prize for her human rights work with women and children in Iran. The other woman from Virginia City was stunned to see Dr. Abadi. Imagine running into your hero on your main street. She said, Dr. Abadi, you have changed my life. You have made such a difference. Because of your courage, it's made it easier for me to take a stand here. You see, her partner was African-American, and she had to be the voice of diversity in that tiny Montana town. Visibly moved, Dr. Abadi responded by saying that she was honored and touched to have had such an impact in a place so far removed from Iran. 
And her strength to lead was renewed by this woman's powerful story. By leading well, you have the opportunity to profoundly impact those you may meet and those you may never meet. Please, take time for clarity of purpose. Take time to acquire leadership skills. Take on real responsibility. You, you, you all can inspire. And with your great courage, you can make this world better and impact those you will never know. Thank you, TEDx Bozeman.